Inquiring minds want to know, what is an abrasive paste? Can it really uh, reduce fine scratches and, and eliminate fine dust in, in your finishing process? What's in it? I'm going to explore these, uh, these questions in this video. If you're interested, keep watching. Hi y'all, Mike Peace Wood Turning. Welcome back to my channel for more tips, tricks, and techniques to help you become a better wood turner. Before we get into uh, what's in abrasive paste, I think it's appropriate to, to review the abrasive pastes that are on the market today. My understanding is there's only three of them I'm familiar with one. The first one is U-Butte Triple E, as shown in this picture from Australia. It's the one I'm most familiar with because I started using it when I first started uh, wood turning about 11 years ago. Uh, the second product, and I want to thank Jeff Horning of the Walnut Log for uh, uh, sponsoring me a container of this uh, Yorkshire grit so I could try it out. Uh, this is made in England. And then there's one made in Utah, Dr. Kirk's uh, Scratch Free uh, Non Toxic Wood Turners Poli Polishing Wax. Let, let's review these three at, at, at kind of a high level and, and concentrate mostly on what their uh, manufacturer has to say about them. We're going to start with. Um, U-Butte uh, Tripoli, uh, I'm going to pull this information from an Amazon ad because it summarizes some of it. It puts a beautiful and durable shine on your turned items with ease, ideal for pins. Tripoli Ultra Shine produces a brilliant finish prior to a applying shell wax. Use after applying shell wax for a drier shine. Can also be used over French polish, lacquers, and polyurethane to produce a brilliant blemish-free surface or to cut and polish old surfaces. Removes sanding mat wax <laughs> easy for you to say. Removes sanding marks from most woods and can greatly reduce your sanding time. It delivers a blemish-free surface, pre-polished and ready for finish application. It goes on to uh, say it, it uh, information I pulled from the company's uh, website. Many other Danishes, uh, many other finishes will also be enhanced by using uh, Tripoli. Ultra Shine uh, to finish the finish. These include Danish oil, polyurethane, nitrocellulose lacquer, and varnish. In other words, you put these finishes on first and then you use the UBU Triple E to, to finish the finish. The company website says the abrasive is rotten stone, also known as Triple E in Australia. The company website says that when uh, Triple E is used on a lathe on raw timber, it produces a brilliant shine, but there's little or no finish on the wood. Because of this, the timber will dull in a short time from moisture uh, in the air, steam, humidity, handling, etc. And this is because the timber is still raw. If it gets wet, it will dull off instantly. You must use a finish on top uh, and they also recommend one of their shell wax finishes. However, because the wax in Tripoli is so tenacious, again this is from the manufacturer, it is possible that it may stop any other finish from adhering to the surface. So if you intend to use another finish, uh, do a test piece first to make sure it'll work. Used over Danish oil, polyurethane, over lacquer as a final finish, it will give you the same brilliant dry shine rather than a wet looking shine that most finishes give. Okay, that's Ubutripoli. Now let's look at uh, Dr. Kirk's uh, Scratch Free. Let me turn to a, a Craft Supply YouTube video for, for content information. And I'll put a link in the description for that video. It contains a variety of oils, waxes, and an ultra fine, fine abrasive that's guaranteed to improve the sanded wood finish four times or more. It's designed to improve the surface of raw and stabilized wood prior to finishing and will also create a glass like appearance on all kinds of plastics and cast resins, non toxic and free of uh, volatile solvents. The third item I've got is this, is this Yorkshire Grit. Yorkshire Grit says it contain, contains pharmaceutical grade ingredients including mineral oil, beeswax, and ultrafine sanding powders. These are then carefully blended without the use of solvents or other strong smelling and potentially harmful chemicals to produce a creamy abrasive paste. Yorkshire Grit acts like uh, a liquid sandpaper reducing the scratches left by the initial dry sanding and it eliminates the increasingly fine dust produced by traditional sanding at higher grits. On most woods, sanding up to 240 grit is sufficient to start with our paste. The grinding powders we use are designed to break down to a finer mesh as they are used, while remaining a uh, 
a cutting edge so as the friction reduces the mesh size of the grit, it's effectively forming a finer abrasive. In compared comparison tests, we believe the finish is at least equivalent to a thousand grit. Okay, so those are the three that are that are available. Uh, the other uh, possibility that is available is making your own uh, paste, and I'll have a video of this next week. All right, let's talk about some of the abrasives that are used in these uh, abrasive pastes. Starting off with uh, rotenstone. Wikipedia says that rotenstone, rottenstone is a fine powdered porous rock used as a polishing abrasive for metal smithing and woodworking. It's usually weathered limestone mixed with diatomaceous, amorphous, or crystalline silica. It has similar applications to pumice, but is generally sold as a finer uh, powder. It's a friable abrasive, meaning it breaks down into smaller fragments as you use it, which is why it works as a polish. It tends to be brown or gray. Limestone is ordinarily white, but it might be colored by the impurities. Iron oxide make, tends to make it brown, yellow, or red, or carbon, which tends to make it uh, blue, black, or gray. It's been used for, I think, hundreds of years in furniture, uh, furn fine furniture uh, uh, finishing. Now, Triple E, when I looked it up, says it's a fine abrasive. It's also used in toothpaste. It has a fine grain crystalline silica which particles uh, are usually in the 1 to 10 micrometers in size. Triple E particles are rounded rather than sharp making it a mild abrasive than pumice. Now pumice is coarser. 4F pumice is, gen is equivalent to sandpaper uh, at the P1200 grit uh, level. Now Dr. Kirk Scratch Free uh, it says it's a super fine ab abrasive. Uh, it doesn't say exactly what the abrasive is. I can say from my, my limited experience in, in using Dr. Kirk's, it is not as aggressive as the Yorkshire Grit or the U Butte uh, Tripoli, which might make it uh, especially suitable for um, uh, acrylic, uh, acrylic pen, pen making. So I've got a little five or six inch uh, rough turn bowl uh, that I've taken to a uh, and it's been drying for, oh, let's see what's got on the outside here. It's been drying since April, so it's plenty dry. This is uh, persimmon. Uh, got just a little bit of color in it. So it's very hard, doesn't have any uh, spalting or punkiness. So I've taken a clean, clean pass uh, and trued it up with a small bowl gouge. Now I'm going to, uh, we're going to go through a process of using one of those abrasive paste so you, we can see how we apply it and how we uh, do it. Um, they vary based on whether they say 240 or 320, and I think that's going to vary on the wood and what type of look you're going for. Uh, so for this piece, let's start with, we're going to go with a 240 grit, which is, uh, you know, the bottom line that several of these uh, folks recommend, and, and see how it does. Now, for this practical exercise, you know, I did that video last week on wet sanding, and wet sanding certainly got its advantages that we talked about there, but for the purpose of this exercise, I want to uh, have dry wood uh, when I start the, the, the process. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this with the uh, dust collector running, and I'm going to go from 120, 180, and 240. Now we got to go to 180 and 240. Okay, I've gone through 240. Uh, I've eliminated all the tool marks. I've got a very, very nice uh, looking surface. It feels feels very, very smooth. Now. You've got a couple of choices with both of these, depending uh, these different grits or different abrasive pastes, depending on the the which part of the instructions or the instructions they give you. Uh, some of them say dry sand up to 240. Others don't really uh, discuss it. Some say put on a a sealer at this point. Some some give you a, a, an alternative. At one time they might say use a sealer. Another time they'll say go go straight on with your abrasive paste. Uh, what, what seems to make sense to me is when you get it to 240, put some type of sealer on it to help seal the pores so the wax compound doesn't get too deep and it will mostly be, uh, be a sur surface and an agent to carry the abrasive. So I'm going to uh, quickly put on some 
uh, nitro uh, lacquer uh, sanding sealer on here and it dries very quickly. Now I'm using lacquer sanding sealer mostly because it dries very fast uh, but uh, shellac uh, uh, will also work. This dries super fast. You have to get it on. It's drying as you put it on if your shop is not too humid. Mine is uh, below 50% humidity. Now this sanding sealer also has the effect of stiffening up the fibers a little bit. And I'm going to put on one more coat. Okay, I thought I was filming when I was putting it on, but basically we put on a, a coat. I'm using this Yorkshire Grit, which has a very fine, very creamy uh, peanut butter, almost a light peanut butter color, fairly liquidy. Uh, and you put it on while the lathe is stationary and rub it in circular motion so you get it over the entire surface. I'm going to put this away. Put on my face shield. Now at a fairly slow speed, maybe no more than 400, we're just going to work it for a couple of minutes because we know the, the, the more we use it, the grit will break down and we're going to do it until the abrasive goes away and there's no residue. Okay, so I've worked through this for a little over a minute. Now I'm going to a clean area of the, of the paper towel to see if I've gotten all the residue off. I'm looking for scratches visible to the naked eye and frankly I'm not seeing any. <laughs> it has taken that 240 grit and really really gotten this a very nice smooth surface without having to go to a higher grit. So the key is getting the re working the residue with enough on there, enough uh, the compound to really let it do its action uh, a couple of minutes and making sure that by using a couple of clean surfaces that you have absolutely no residue that's going to interfere with your your finish because this is not a finish it it is cleaning up this it uh, treats the surface but you still need to put a a finish on here to, to protect your piece from fingerprints humidity and and, and dust and, and so on so I'm going to use my regular uh, finish. Of course, I've got to turn this around and do the inside, and that's going to be antique oil. The wax should not uh, have any interference with antique oil, but from my research, is is generally as long as you get the residue off, you should not have uh, a problem with uh, lacquer, uh, shellac based, certainly not with oil based. Uh, I did take one piece that I was experimenting with. It's a piece of uh, Bradford pear and I polished it with a couple of different of the abrasives and then just to see what kind of effect I had once I had it clean I actually put spray coat of lacquer on there and I didn't there's no uh, orange peel effect I could not see any any problem of course it's only been a day so it's not a definitive test but uh, it appears to me that if you get the surface clean you'll probably have pretty good luck but again you should experiment with your finish over top on a sample piece uh, to see uh, if you can go right over over top of this, but I think putting the uh, sanding sealer on there first tends to uh, seal those those pores and to minimize the uh, chances of wax getting embedded in there. Okay, I've got a nice uh, uh, smooth cuts on the inside. I uh, uh, don't see any significant tool marks, so I'm going to go ahead and start sanding with 120, go to 180 and 240 on the inside. <laughs> Again, this is not an exhaustive experiment. It's not an attempt to see which abrasive paste is better than the other. Uh, it's just to give you some idea of how to use it. Uh, this time, instead of using a sanding sealer, I'm just going to use the abrasive paste. And I'll be able to compare the inside and the outside, what kind of results I get when I put the finish on it. We're just going to rub it in real good, get it over the whole surface. And let's turn the speed down to about 400 or so and just work it in real good for a couple of minutes and let's see what kind of results we get. Now let's see if we get all the residue off. So to some extent this works similar to uh, last week where we talked about wet sanding because you're starting at a lower grit and you're not generating any dust when you're putting this on to get that finer finish that you might otherwise have to go to 320, 400, 600, 
possibly 800. Uh, most of the um, abrasive paste folks seem to indicate that their, their paste is, is taking you to a surface uh, generally around equivalent to a, a thousand. And I'm looking at this and I do not see any visible signs of any radial radial scratches. So I'm very pleased with uh, with how this, this product works. So I think you can see that the abrasive paste is a solution that's uh, worthy of your consideration. You should give it a try. Next week, uh, at the next video actually, I'm going to show you how you can actually make your own. Uh, I won't claim that it's any better, but it, but it works. Uh, if you've tried using a sand abrasive, I appreciate your comments. Leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with uh, other folks so we can spread the message to other, other wood turners. Y'all stay safe and come on back here.